as I mentioned, my son and I had a, a gentleman we wanted to meet named Randy, who we met through a, um, a, a common friend in the aerospace industry. Randy uh, flew for one of the regional airlines in Japan and operated out of Hideda Airport, which is the red square on the map. And he um, uh, lived in Ota City, which is the blue oval on the map. And we would be meeting him in Ota City, and later he would be taking us to Kawasaki, which is the green oval on the map. So Haneda is the airport I was mentioning that is built on an island and the, uh, in Tokyo Bay. And that is the airport we would fly out of to come back home. So this is Christian and I waiting for our food to come out. We are at the Otori Fisherman's Aburia, which is in Oda City. And Oda City, by the way, is part of Tokyo. It's a suburb of Tokyo. And here's a good shot of my son Christian with Randy, the gentleman we were meeting. And as you can see in this particular restaurant, we will get to grill our own food right there at the table. You can see a nice little uh, charcoal fireplace set up waiting for the food to come out. And a little closer up shot. So just uh, kicking back waiting. You can see a little towel right in front of uh, Randy's arm there on the table. And there's one on my side as well. And those are hot towels. They bring them out to you in most restaurants to cleanse your hands and such before you start eating. And again, while we were waiting, the owner came out and just volunteered to take a picture of all three of us together, which was super nice of him. You can see we have a little uh, appetizer there on the table with uh, like spring rolls and some dip for them. But uh, very cool, the guy just came out and, and knew exactly what we were there for, what we were planning, and so uh, volunteered to get a picture of us together. The Otori Fisherman's Aburia was a very unique restaurant. It was almost like being in a bamboo jungle, as you can see. This is just kind of looking around the restaurant slash bar, and there's bamboo all over, and there were a lot of these little ponds with large goldfish in them and some little bridges over some of the ponds as well. So it almost kind of gave you the feeling like you're eating out in a bamboo forest. This was the sake selection and rather than being back in the kitchen somewhere it's right out the front where you can uh, I mean, pick a bottle of your own to be served and that way you can see everything you've got available. After we had gotten some food and beer, Randy took us for a little walk through Ojo City, which is a, a real old-fashioned community, one of the older neighborhoods. And we saw this interesting little place. First thing we thought was uh, probably a funeral home because of the flower arrangements out front. Uh, it's actually called Sushi Dining Fuji is the name of the place, and it's actually a restaurant. So what are the strange little flower arrangements? Well, as Randy explained, it's commonplace for whenever a new restaurant or anything, a new uh, dry goods store, whatever it happens to be, opens up in the neighborhood, all of their competitors within a few blocks buy these flower arrangements and put them out in front of this new business. And that's their way of welcoming them to the neighborhood and wishing them, you know, good, good business, prosperity, health. Uh, so it's kind of like a, a housewarming gift, more or less. Very cool. So as we were walking through Ojo City, I happened to notice this place here called the Buffalo Steakhouse and was rather shocked. The reason I was shocked is I had just heard a story on NPR maybe three months prior to our departure all about this little bar and how it was very westernized and they played western music, you know, like literally western music, uh, like more like cowboy music and would play some cowboy movies inside and everything was very western american in this in this little shop and um it was like one of the most popular places in, in all of tokyo now tokyo is a city of over 15 million people so the chances of just running into this place were like slim to none when you consider the size of the city but here we were just walking down one of those little almost like an alleyway and right there in front of us was the Buffalo Steakhouse. Very surprising. As you can see, Ota City is a very old neighborhood. Uh, the markets there, as you can see, are an old architectural style. 
uh, the marketing is done in an old fashioned style. No glitz and glamour, no neon lights or anything of that sort. Uh, lots of fun to walk through the older neighborhoods. I like them much better than the more modern neighborhoods. And uh, this is about 9 p.m. So there's still you know, plenty of activity at that time of night. And again, no fear of walking down alleyways uh, at that time of night, which is, as you can see, this is nearly an alleyway more so than a street. But to them, it's a street. That this is as busy as like a main street in one of our major cities. Also note all the bicycles around and none of them, uh, you can't tell in the picture, but I can tell you from first-hand experience, none of them had bicycle locks on them. As we walked through the city, we encountered numerous banks of these drink machines like you see here on the right. And again, uh, in this, you know, not to stereotype, but if this were in the United States, once the streets were abandoned for the evening, chances are those machines would probably be vandalized. And over there, it just it doesn't happen. And again, bicycles. And some of those bikes just beyond the machines there would probably stay there most of the night, if not all night. And the people would come out the next morning, and their bikes would still be there, even without a, a bike lock, no chains on them. So as you can see, still hustling and bustling, even well after sundown. Um, always safe, beautiful place to go. The old markets are just really amazing to see. So after a fun walk through Oda City, we took a very brief train ride over to Kawasaki, which is a, an independent city. It is not part of Tokyo. In fact, it's in the Kanagawa Prefecture, so it's not even in the, the same prefecture, or as we would call them here, a state. Um, so, as you can see, already coming up, you see the, the nice gateway going into the, the uh, market area and lots of lights. So the Kawasaki market is much more modern. Here again, you can see just how much more modern and how much more lit up this area is. And this is just uh, the neighborhood, uh, you know, the, the market area of the neighborhood. This isn't the actual market itself. Once you get into the actual market, then it's very well lit, very commercial. But you can see even the street signs here are uh, much more modern and a little better advertisement. Pennants over the street, uh, you know, really highlighting business. And there's a McDonald's there on the left as well. And finally, we make our way into the actual marketplace. And again, look at how clean the streets are here. Uh, this, there are cars that are allowed to go down these, or they rarely ever do. They usually go outside of this area. Because like the area up near the Sensoji Temple Complex, these uh, streets right here are actually connected. So like from one side of the road to the other, there's actually a roof connecting them. So that it almost makes like an indoor mall, even though these are just ind individual streets. Again, notice how modern everything is here. Notice all of the lights. Much more commercial than Ota City was. And again, lots of bicycles, completely unlocked. Lots of people. I mean, by this time it's so 9.30, maybe even close to 10 o'clock. And this is the premier uh, business on the, the Strip. The PIA, uh, Pachinko and Karaoke and Net Cafe. So Pachinko is kind of like their version of a slot machine. It's a matter of using a handle that launches steel ball bearings up and they come down between a series of nails and you have to get them to drop into certain... Um, uh, carriages or you know go inside the machine and then it, it does other things and spits out more ball bearings and the ball bearings can be traded in at the end of the night for for cash and also there is karaoke studio in the upstairs and there is also an internet cafe which are common in a lot of other countries where people may not have internet in their home and this is just a few more street scenes this is still in Kawasaki we've come out from under the covered area 
which as you can see is still bustling. Look at all the signage. Beautiful place. The little place on the right with the blue and white sign is Lawton's. That's a huge chain over there. You know, pretty much along the lines of like 7-Eleven. And so there you have it. That is Kawasaki. Now, my favorite purchase of the night was actually a purchase in Ota City, which is this Raisin Rush candy bar. So it's a white chocolate uh, candy bar. And it's chock full of really plump bourbon soaked raisins. And you can actually even feel the alcoholic kick when you eat one of these things. And it's a huge bar and very inexpensive. Good stuff. So in our next segment, I will return to Sumida City, which is the neighborhood where the Tokyo Sky Tree is. Uh, there's really a lot to see when you just kind of delve into the neighborhood and, and go for a walk through the neighborhood. Really interesting place. And we'll do that in the next segment.